Now, last Sunday, you had a bumper reading with Dick and Diane. Uh, I watched it online. You did very well. Um, this week's is also a long one. It does say Judges chapter 4, but it actually also goes into chapter 5. And it's got lots of difficult place names and lots of long people names. Uh, and if you know Brenda's saying, there's lots of marmalade words, which I wasn't prepared to give anybody this morning. So sit back and enjoy a video version instead. There's a small parental warning uh, that towards the end, there's a bit of a gruesome scene. Blink and you miss it. Um, but just be prepared that there is a little bit of uh, additional added violence in this video. Thank you, Shatish. My First Bible presents Deborah and Barak. The Israelites did what a fat god again worshipped false gods of the Canaanites. As a consequence, they fell under the oppression and domination of Jabin, a Canaanite king who reigned in Hazor. The head of the army was called Sisera. For 20 long years, they cruelly oppressed the Israelites, <laughs> cried to the Lord for help. Blah, 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 blah. Since Sisera, the leader of Jabin's army, had 900 iron chariots and a mighty army. At that time, a prophetess and judge of Israel ruled Israel. Her name was Deborah. Deborah had her court under the palm tree in the mountainous region of Ephraim. There, the Israelites came to her to solve their problems. Once, reports reached Deborah about the suffering of the Israelites at the hands of the bloodthirsty army of Sisera. At that moment, God used Deborah to do something about it and sent for the commander of the Israelites. It was Barak, hey. and told him, The Lord God of Israel commands you to go fight for his people. How can you be so sure about it? Barak answered. Do you want me to fight for people who always deny their own God? The God of Israel is also your God, so gather 10,000 men from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. Take them to Mount Tabor. Sisera will be there with his chariots and troops, but God will deliver him into your hands. Barak did not have the courage to follow this order by himself, because he knew that Sisera's army was very powerful and told Deborah, I will only fight if you come with me, otherwise I will not go. The Lord sends you, not me, Deborah said. But it's okay, I will go with you. Hey. However, because of the way you are going to face the battle, victory will no longer be yours. God will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. Oh, okay. <laughs> In this way, Deborah went to Barak, gathered the 10,000 soldiers of the Naphtali tribe and Zebulun. Sisera, Upon learning of the mobilization of the Israelites, summoned his 900 chariots and all of his soldiers to the Kishon Brook. When Sisera and his soldiers looked at the Israelite army, they underestimated their strength and abilities. Are those troops the entire enemy army? Yes, sir. They are few in number and do not appear to be professional soldiers. <laughs> what an incompetent commander! Your troops have no chance against us. This war will be easy. <laughs> so, Deborah told Barak with determination, Go ahead. This is the day the Lord will deliver the army of Sisera into your hands. The Lord marches in front of you. In this way, Barak descended from Mount Tabor with the 10,000 soldiers for battle. As Barak advanced, the Lord caused Sisera's army to break up. Their chariots were smashed, and the Canaanites soon began to lose the battle. Sisera, seeing the impending defeat, jumped from his chariot. 
and then fled on foot from the battle. The entire army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. No one was left alive. Meanwhile, Sisera had fled on foot to the tent of a woman called Jael, who was the wife of a Quenita. Oh, wow! It's the General Sisera! Go on, my lord. Come in here. Do not be afraid. Sisera entered the tent. They are very tired, he said. I am thirsty. Could you bring me some water? She uncovered a skin of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him with a blanket to rest. Go to the entrance of the tent, he said. If someone comes and asks if anyone is here, say no. Of course, whatever you say, my lord. He, exhausted, was deeply sleeping. JL knew that this man was a dangerous enemy and that he represented a threat. So she took a stake from her tent and a hammer, snuck up on him, and killed him by driving a stake through his head. And Sisera died. At that moment, Barak was passing by looking for Sisera, and JL went out to meet him. Come here, she said. I'll show you the man you're looking for. Huh? Barrett went in with her, and he saw Sisera oh. lying on the floor, dead, with the stake driven through his head. Oh my god. Hey! It was then that Barrett realized that what Deborah prophesied had come true that God would deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman, and that victory would be thanks to her. Thanks to Jael. That day, God humiliated Jabin, the Canaanite king, in the presence of the Israelites. Israel grew stronger in the fight against Jabin and his army until they completely destroyed it. Thus, the Israelites were free from the oppression of the king of Javan. Deborah and Barak sang a song full of praise and thanks to God for his intervention and for the liberation of Israel. A song to remember God's faithfulness and highlight the courage of leaders who fought for freedom. So, um... Worship band, where are your shades this morning? Should have told you that, shouldn't I? No. <laughs> no. Should I just stay back here? Is that better? Okay. I'm looking at the sound desk. I seem to be very echoey, but I'll let you carry on. So, um... This morning, um, following on from Hebrews 11, last Sunday, we're starting this mini-series about the heroes of faith. And today, I have Deborah. So give me a wave if you knew this story before you saw the video. Pod will definitely know this story because we recently did the story of JL, didn't we? Um, and actually, anyone in Explorers, we were talking a bit about Barak last week, although I'd forgotten he was in this story. Um, also, um, at Messy Church, uh, not this summer, but last summer, um, we did the story of Deborah. We made judges gavels to show her role as a judge, although she wasn't a judge like um, our Alison was, more of a sort of chieftain leader, um, somebody who people came to and used their wisdom and their discernment to sort out problems and disagreements rather than just the law. Uh, we made kitchen roll trees to show that that was where she sat. Now, I'm sort of assuming it was either a special tree or a particularly large tree or maybe the only tree in that particular place to be her spot. But anyway, the people came to her for guidance. And then we made sword bookmarks with the words, God is with you, to show that even as we face battles, we're not alone. So let's get a little bit of background. <clears throat> um, I'm sure you all know your book of Judges very well. Um, it chronicles 339 years between the death of Joshua and Israel's first king, Saul. 
Uh, the time of the judges was a very wicked period in Israel's history. So Othniel was the first judge of Israel. Give me a wave if you know of Othniel. No, okay. Uh, and then we had Ehud. He was the second judge. Uh, and then when he died, we had Shamgar, who was the third judge. And then we have Deborah, the fourth judge and the only female judge and prophetess. And she ruled from 1237 BC to 1198 BC. So why did Israelites need judges? Do you know what? Sometimes it seems like they never learn their lessons. The same thing happens again and again. First, the Israelites would begin to disobey God and to leave him. Then the Lord would let enemies win battles against him and treat them badly. And then with their suffering, they're sorry about their disobeyment, and they would pray to God for help. And then finally, the Lord would send someone to help the people and save them from their enemies. And at this time in their history, it was the judges. And this cycle of behavior is the background of the story. The people go astray. They suffer for their sins. The people ask God for help. God would send a judge who would deliver. The deliverer would die. And the cycle would begin all over again until we get to Jesus. But we'll face that when we get to Easter. The Lord allowed Israel's enemy Jabin to defeat and rule over him. And it seems like Jabin's way of oppressing the people was to take their crops and sheep and cattle. He had iron chariots pulled by swift horses who'd simply run over anyone who tried to stop him. The people were suffering and they turned to the Lord and they prayed to God. And the Lord sent Deborah. God told Deborah what to say and the people wisely went to her. So God tells Deborah to have Barak gather and lead an army to Mount Tabor. This was near where Jabin lived. Now, I cut out a chunk of my talk for time that goes on about the geography. Have a look at a map. You'll be able to see where they all fit together. Um, God promised that Sisera would come to fight and that Barak would win. Now, we can only guess the reasons for Barak's hesitation. Maybe he was frightened. Maybe he wanted Deborah along to convey God's instructions or a bit like a flag in battle to be like the the banner that everyone holds behind. Uh, Maybe he wanted that sort of morale boost for his army. Whatever their reasons, he only agreed to go if Deborah went with him. Although women didn't normally go into battle, Deborah agreed. She pointed out that he wouldn't get the credit. What it doesn't show in that video is what happens next. Gives you a good idea. Deborah says to Barak, go, this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? And again, Deborah promises victory. And uh, the Lord in Judges 5, it brings a big rain. We've had some big rain in this country recently. We know what a big rain is. And their heavy iron chariots got bogged down in the mud. This effectively evened out the advantage that Sisera's army had. Uh, And he himself left his chariot and ran away on foot. Uh, Did you spot the ketchup bit in the video? I thought that was quite amusing. I didn't spot that the first time. Um, The enemy troops fled down the valley towards Harasheth, but it was too far for them to get to, and Barak's men destroyed them. And then we see what Jael does. I don't want to push the point home. Come on. But after, Barak is, uh, after Sisera is killed, Jael's heroism is celebrated in song. Just as Deborah said, a woman received the credit. So Deborah's faithfulness to God demonstrates that God desires our availability. We have to be ready and willing to act and to listen and to follow God's prompting. Deborah tells Barak, I will go with you, but because you didn't trust God and did not go when God called you, the honor of this war will not be yours. So I'm going to pull out three threads from this. And the first one is that courage is required. Faith requires courage to act. Extraordinary courage belongs to those who believe in God. God had already commanded Barak to assemble the armor, the army. However, Barak was afraid to go through on God's orders to him. He allowed himself to be intimidated by the enemy. 
How often do we find ourselves afraid to follow through on God's leading in our lives because we fear an enemy? Barak was only willing to obey if Deborah went with him. Deborah possessed great courage because she believed God. Deborah chose to believe God when he promised to deliver them if they obeyed. Barak faltered in faith, and Deborah chastises him. And sometimes God waits to add his blessing and answer to prayer until the people believe he will answer. Deborah reminds Barak, hasn't the Lord gone before you? Deborah knew the overwhelming might of the Canaanite army couldn't stand against the Israelites because their God would fight for them. God threw the army into confusion. God made the rain come and delivered the Israelites. But God waited until the leadership was willing to take him at his word before he delivered Israel. Courageous faith is what God wants. And God chooses to use those who will allow themselves to be his instruments, not those that we think should be used. I wonder who else this might remind you of in the Bible. David and Goliath springs to mind immediately, but also Joshua and Caleb and Esther. Deborah was a woman, serving as a prophetess and judge among the Israelites. That might not seem significant to us today, but in the culture of that day, women had very little social standing and almost no legal standing. A woman serving as prophetess and judge was quite amazing. In verse... uh, Chapter 5, we find out she's a wife and also she's a mother. She's not exactly who you'd expect God to use as a prophet, a judge, and a courageous military leader. The Bible, however, is full of examples of God calling unqualified people to do his work. God does not always call the qualified, but God always qualifies those he calls. God uses people who will allow him to use them to bring him glory. And during a desperate time in Israel, God awakens Deborah and Barak to see that the only way the nation could escape the tyranny of King Jabin was to meet his forces in battle. And on the surface, it appears to be a substantial mismatch. But only if the power of God is left out of the equation. Instead, God not only motivated Deborah and Barak to attempt the impossible, he raised up the people to fight and opened up the heavens to pour out the rain and the battle was, loved, was won. And in life, we all face battles. And how we choose to respond to them will determine the outcome. To act in faith requires courage. If we look at the circumstances and situations alone, we can be overwhelmed and tempted to give in to our fears. But if we remember to factor in God's love and power, you know that in spite of the circumstances, you'll be victorious with God's help. Number two, faith is rewarded. When God inspires someone with the courage to step out, and in faith they do, God always rewards their faith. Jael exhibited tremendous courage, more courage than Barak, and she killed the enemy while he slept in her tent. It took a lot of courage to do what she did. She acted without regard for her own safety or security. And as word of her heroism spread, she was celebrated and honored for her courageous role in bringing deliverance to the Israelites. And after this, the land had rest and peace for 40 years. God's blessing always comes upon those who have the courage to serve him. And it also benefits the people around them. Israel enjoyed 40 years of peace because of a godly woman named Deborah and Jael. I wonder, do we have the courage to act in faith or does fear keep us silent? Deborah was willing to be used by God and ended up being recorded forever in the history of God's people. The life of Deborah is a celebration of believing God despite the circumstances we find ourselves in. God can be trusted to deliver what he promises. And those who courageously act in faith believe that the battle belongs to the Lord. God is reliable. Again, back to the geography. From Mount Tabor, Deborah could clearly see the storm clouds forming to the southwest, wherever that is, 50 miles away beyond Mount Carmel. She knew when to tell Barak to go down into the Kishon River Valley. 
the clouds were hidden from Sisera's view by the mountains. As Sisera's 900 armored chariots and the army were bearing down on Barak and the Israelites, it seems that it's really no contest. But then all of a sudden, a storm comes up over the mountain range and catches Sisera and his army by surprise. Suddenly, the might of the chariots is defeated, the same way the Egyptian chariots have been defeated at the Red Sea, stuck in mud. Of course, Barak was well rewarded with victory, but not with the glory. God's word is always reliable. Once we develop the courage and decide to take action, God rewards our faith with divine intervention. Psalm 9, verse 10. And they that know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have not forsaken those that seek you. So where are you in Deborah's story this morning? Are you stuck in a loop like the people of Israel? Maybe you've drifted away from God and got yourself in a bit of a pickle and need the word from a prophet like Deborah to bring you back. Are you facing a battle and need a warrior like Deborah to go with you? Or is there something you feel you need to speak out about? Will the story of Deborah give you the courage you need, knowing that God is mighty and God is with you? Or are you at the point where you need to sing God's praise for what he's done for you, like Barak and Deborah did? So three points. Courage is required, faith is rewarded, God is reliable. And just like Deborah, we're going to sing God's praise. So would you stand, if you're able, for our next song once again? <laughs>